99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Good afternoon. It is 4.07 on a Friday. On a Friday. Everybody's happy because it's a Friday. It's uh, June 24th, 2016. My name is Chris Roloff. I'm normally here with you every Friday, uh, whether Mac is here or not. Today, Mac is not here, but this is Max World Live, which means, what does that mean to you? Max World Live is a radio program that's all about you. It's about a conversation. It's not about right and wrong. It's not about yes and no. It's not about uh, coming to the final conclusion on everything that's ever been asked ever. It's about asking every question. Uh, and if we're not asking the question, then it's probably not Max World. So we want to ask lots of crazy questions and we want to think about it. And the, one of the things that makes this broadcast unique is that 90% of the time, I think everybody that's in the room is a Christian, claims the name of Christ, claims to be born again, wants to follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior, wants to be a disciple, understands their need for salvation. Is It comes from that perspective. But we've got a lot of ideas and we have different experiences and we have different uh, upbringings and we 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 some of us work for different organizations and we have uh, objectives there. Um, but also, uh, this is a place for the non-believer to come. We have non-believers that listen every day that join in on this because this is a good place to ask a question. This is a good place to enter into the conversation, maybe wonder what does it mean um, to be a Christian? What, is, what do Christians think about? Well, the reality is, man, we think about what you think about. We live in the same world. We live in the same world you live in. We drive cars probably a lot like the car you drive. We live in neighborhoods like you live in. We all we all live similar lives. Uh, but what we hope to do here at 99.3 FM, the truth, is we try to say, let's not just live a normal life. Let's, let's ask what the God who created us might have for us. What, what does he expect of our lives? And we find the answer to that in Scripture. So on 99.3, you're going you're gonna to hear a lot of great Bible teaching programs, and you're going to hear a lot of people who are, are biblical experts who are going to answer biblical questions for you. This afternoon, between 3 and 5, especially from 4 to 5, things tend to get pretty exciting. But 3 to 5, we, we ask questions. We wrestle with stuff because that's okay. That's a safe place uh, to do that. Today is no different than that. Frank is here. He's doing double duty. He's going to be watching the chat and the Service Legends Truth text line, and he's going to be Frank, which is its own responsibility. And Jeb is here producing, of course, and my special guest today is Nathan Ottman with A Family Leader. Good to be here, Chris. Yeah, buddy. You've become kind of a, a go-to guy for all things crazy. If we want, If we want to know something smart if we want to have a smart guy in the room we call you well i appreciate that but i think it's really because i have a face for radio you do <laughs> well, well that's not you're a handsome guy so um but before we get too far i made a promise uh to our caller that we would get right to her uh and and, and the question that we had the last hour we're going to continue the question now is do you believe that the evangelical right, uh, th that movement has become a hindrance to the gospel? And the reason why we're bringing this up is because Trump is the Republican nominee. And this week on Tuesday, over a thousand evangelicals gathered to meet with Donald Trump and, and to discuss things with him and to hear from him and to understand where he's coming from on issues that matter to Christians. Uh, and uh, let's go to the phone now. Uh, welcome to Max World. Is she there? I'm here. Hi, how are you doing? Are you? Are you I'm, I'm talking to you. What, tell me your name again. Jereen Corbin. Jereen, that is a beautiful name. I've never heard it before, so I'm, I just don't want to butcher it. <laughs> hey, it's kind of unusual. I'm a good old Norwegian, and it's a Norwegian name. Ah, there you go. There you go. So, uh, so this is too hot for you, then, if you're a good Norwegian. <laughs> no, I'm baking Kringle right now. Oh, my goodness. It is a good Friday if you're baking Kringle. Well, thank you for, for calling. What was your question or comment today? Well, you know, in thinking about Trump, um, 
we know what Hillary, she's made it very plain what, what she stands for. And, um, you know, God puts rulers in and you can take them out. <laughs> you know, uh, I keep thinking about um, Saul. Yeah. When he was on his way to persecute and kill the Christians, and God showed him the right way to go. <laughs> and he then was, you know, the wonderful Paul that wrote all so many of much of the New Testament. But, you know, nothing's impossible with God. And um, I, I just have a lot of confidence in the fact that. As I said before, we know what Hillary stands for, right. and and if Trump were to choose, be very wise in his choice of a vice president, and they work together, um, you know, a Christian. Yeah. And we really can't judge. You know, I know there's a lot of Christians that think they've never sinned. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they've never, maybe, you know... <laughs> They might go to church and stuff, and they might, you know, think they're good enough, but none of us are. We are very sinful. Right, right. We, we, we need a savior. So, Jereen, do you think that uh, that you're going to be voting for Donald Trump? I know that's a that's a tough question, but what, do you think you're going to be voting for Donald Trump then? At this point in time, yep. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I think there are a lot of people that are that are in your position, and uh, you know, Jereen, thank you so much for being brave and calling in today. Well, Thank you so much. It's the first time I've ever called a radio station, and I'm very nervous. Well, you did you did fantastic, and we thank you for listening, and we thank you for calling. You're always welcome, Dream. And the main thing we need to do is keep praying. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. God bless you all. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for calling. Huh? Well, Nathan, I, I, you know, she's she's where a lot of people are at. There, yep. A lot of people are at a place where we know who Hillary is and, and we don't want to vote for her. And then this is the only other option we've got. And this is probably what we're going to go with. Um, that's where a lot of people are at right now. Uh, and uh, Frank, you've got your finger up. You got a comment or we got a text? Well, over there? Uh, both. Uh, I absolutely agree with Jereen. She's uh, she spoke to my sentiment sentiments. Exactly. And but this text says a uh, particular texter that I said, well, send in a good question. She, uh, she, texter said, I'm not listening right now. I'm walking the dog. I look forward to the new way of listening to the show. What all you have to do is dial a number and listen through your phone that way. Is that being worked on? Yeah, if you've got, you got a smartphone, but you're talking about just through uh, calling a number and listening. At no, this I think it's through the smartphone. Yeah, we've got we, apps. There are multiple. There are multiple ways. We have to an app. We have an app for okay. that. And yeah. Chris, what's the name of that app <laughs> what for is our the listeners? Name? For our listeners, well, there's a lot of ways that you can listen to us on your smartphone. If you go to the App Store, the Google Store, you look for the Truth Network app. That's there. Tune In Radio is there. Just search for K T I A in the Tune In Radio app. You'll find us. Uh, there is also. Um, there's something else, too. I, I can't remember what the other thing is. But you can always listen online if you have a computer. In fact, if you just if you have a smartphone that has a browser on it, like you can surf the internet, go to truthnetwork.com. If you go to truthnetwork.com, in your browser window, a, a little pop-up for the app will be right there. You just click on it, and you can download it to your phone. That's probably the easiest thing to do. I'd say just go to your smartphone, uh, go to truthnetwork.com, and you'll, and you'll be able to get the app that way. Um, Nathan, I want to get to you, and and today we are going to be giving away tickets uh, to the Family Leadership Summit, and of course, uh, th the reason we're talking about this is because uh, topic today, and, and the reason why I want to give the tickets away today as we're talking about this is because they go hand in hand. We want to have a fully rounded biblical worldview as right. Christians, and the Family Leadership Summit that's coming up on Saturday, July 9th is the place to be if you want to get your mind refocused on where it needs to be. As, as, as Bob Vanderplot said uh, just earlier today, think bigger than just Donald Trump. There's something bigger that we need to be calling ourselves to. So I want to give away four tickets right now to anybody, the third person that calls me. I want you to call in right now, 515 244 
888-777-0077. And I'm going to give you four tickets to the Family Leadership Summit on Saturday, July 9th. This is featuring Ann Graham Lotz, of course, the uh, daughter of Billy Graham, yep. uh, it, it, the war room actor T.C. Stalling, biblical worldview expert Del Tackett, and so much more. Uh, that is Saturday, July 9th. Call in right now, and I'll give you four tickets to the Family Leadership Summit on Saturday. And if you don't want to get free tickets, uh, you can go to the Family leader.com uh, and buy your tickets there. Uh, this is going to be, I'm really looking forward to it, Nathan. It's going to be a great event. Um, the theme is revival in the home church and government. We've got lots of great breakout sessions. We've got local speakers in some of those breakout sessions talking about issues that affect us from virtually every area of life. And we think it's going to be something that's not going to ignore the political season. That's why we, we have revival in the government, but we think it's going to help people focus on God in every area of their lives and not get too sucked into the, the political world. Yeah. And, and we don't need to be, you know, here's, here's, I want, I want you to, I want you to believe me here when I say this, you have no reason to be afraid. You have no reason to be afraid. If Hillary Clinton becomes the president of the United States, you have no reason to be afraid. That's right. If Donald Trump becomes the next president of the United States, you have no reason to be afraid. You have the only thing that could, should give you reason to be afraid is if you were at war with the God who created you. What do you mean at war? I wouldn't be at war with a God who created me. Well, you might be because he sent his son into the world to have a relationship with you and you think of Jesus Christ and you think, ah, I don't have anything to do with that guy. If you don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, that's something that you should be concerned about. But if you have a relationship with Jesus, if, you're, if, you, if you are seeking his face, if you acknowledge your sin and trusting Jesus Christ as your savior, you have nothing to fear. So if you want to vote for Donald Trump and you want him to be the next president of the United States, that's okay. And if it ends up being a terrible choice and America goes down the drains because of it, hey, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It'll be all right. If Hillary Clinton becomes elected, same thing. I don't want you to be afraid. So, hey, we're going to go to the phones. Um, Dennis is, uh, when we get back, we're going to go to Dennis on the phone. Dennis, thank you so much for being patient with me. You know, hanging in here on Max World. We're going to talk about that. I want to hear from you. Do you think the evangelical right in and of itself, talking too much about politics, is getting in the way of sharing the gospel? I want to hear from you. 515-244-0077 or send us a text. We'll be back. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Yeah. 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. It is a Friday. Boy, howdy, is it a Friday. It's 421 in the afternoon on a Friday afternoon right here in central Iowa. And you are live on 99.3 FM, The Truth, right here in Max World. I'm Chris Roloff filling in for Mac. And he, he does a great job every day hosting this show. And I just usually get to sit back and, as he points out, play with my cell phone and tweet things and take selfies and be goofy while he's running the show. And I get to do the hard work today. Uh, the normal cast of characters is mostly here. I'm here. Frank is here, and he's doing double duty because Bob is not here, so he's watching the chat and being Frank, as I said, and Jeb is producing the broadcast. But our special guest this hour is Nathan Ottman with the Family Leader. Great to be here. It's good to have you here. Good we're, to be here on a Friday. On a fr- on a nice Friday, yes. getting ready for the weekend. Brother, we're going to get into some heavy stuff, I hope, here in this next half hour. Uh, but the question that I've got asking, uh, the poll question sort of is, do you think the evangelical right, uh, the, the, the political movement that is the evangelical right, has become a hindrance to the gospel here in the United States? We're getting some answers online on my Facebook page that say yes, and some that say no. Uh, I want to know what you have to say. Call me at 515 Four four double o double seven. Uh, we're going to go to the phones now, where Dennis is hanging on very patiently. Dennis, what do you say? Well, I say the, uh, yes. I think uh, you know I'm not down on him, uh, but I think uh, our primary uh, goal is in this world is to glorify Christ, and that is by you know one of those ways Jesus said is to go share the gospel, and and uh, politics obviously. Uh, you know, gets in the way, and 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 maybe the right is you know going too far that way. But I'm you know I'm not against them. I, I did want to say though I cannot vote for Trump. You know, you'll know them by their fruits, and he's had mostly rotten fruit, maybe some bad fruit. But I I have not seen any hardly any good fruit. They say he's a nice guy when he's not on camera, but you know what? Why is that? You know he he's uh, I work with disabled people, and he's made fun of disabled people. He's made fun of women. Uh, I, I, anybody that disagrees with him, watch out. I, I just can't uh, trust him. He's still got to make the final decisions as president, even if he gets a good vice president. Well, Dennis, so, I, I, I agree. You know, we've got Nathan Ottman here from the Family Leader, and when any anytime I hear people say about Donald Trump, if you disagree with him, watch out. I, I think I think of Bob Vanderplant. Yeah, you know, he he Bob didn't lock arms right away with with trump and next thing you know he's slamming donald trump is slamming bob vanderplatz on social media um and of all people the des moines register came to bob vanderplatz's defense and said no trump you you're 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 falsely accusing bob vanderplatz here and if you i don't do you remember that dennis it was over the uh uh nathan you remember what it was yeah, over absolutely. it was over the the dinner or something like that hotel visits yeah. and and just general uh general interactions that were no big deal until until Bush Donald, came to south yeah, yeah and then yeah. trump decided to become a jerk about it and and so dennis that concerns you a little bit does it well it does i mean you, once a jerk you must god changes <laughs> your heart i i just can't see somebody disagrees with them being president it would be embarrassing if i voted for him and and I'm sure not voting for Hillary. So, uh, you know, uh, and maybe you can't talk for Steve Dace, but it sounds like he's still not going to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, I can't I can't talk for Steve Dace, and I'm glad sometimes that I don't talk like Steve Dace because my mama would be disappointed with me, I think, <laughs> if I did sometimes. You know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, no, Steve Steve is uh, is is a friend. Uh, he's, he's on the air every day uh, from 8, yeah. to 8 to 11 here on 99.3 FM. And, you know, I don't agree with him all the time, but... Uh, you know, 
this is a frustrating issue for a lot of people and a lot of really hard questions are being asked. Dennis, thank you so much for being patient and weighing in. We love hearing from you, brother. Thanks. Well, for... I think people should really pray as Christians before they vote for Donald Trump. That's for sure. Well, absolutely. And we should, I, we should pray because it's a, it's a serious decision when we vote, we should vote, we should vote some way. Uh, and it's a serious decision, but remember Dennis, I want to encourage you that, that if you, if you decide that you can vote for Donald Trump, it's not the end of the world, man. It's, it's no. really, and I'm not saying that you should vote for Donald Trump or Hillary or anybody. I'm not yeah. telling you who you should vote for, but remember that God really is in control and we've got to make wise decisions with what options we've been given. Hey, Dennis, thank you so much for calling yeah. in. Uh, you can join the conversation just like Dennis did at 515-244-0077, or you can send us a text at 515-809-0993. Frank? Well, I hear Dennis and... I'm sure he's an upstanding guy, but it just comes down to me. um, It's Hillary or Trump. And if enough people like Dennis don't vote for Trump, we're likely to get Hillary. And it will be they will Hillary will pick up where they left off in the 90s with a daily, weekly, monthly scandal. So if you want some more of that back, those of you who lived through the 90s before we got W. Bush and they carried Hillary out of the White House, kicking and screaming, hanging onto the drapes, and they took China and everything else with them. If you want some more of that, sit home and don't go Trump. Oh boy, howdy, Nathan! What, we're we're really we're really getting into the weeds. What do you think? You are. I'm I'm going to jump in here because I think this is not. It doesn't have to be in the weeds. And you you've made the point. You've asked the question. Really, is this a hindrance to the gospel? And I think you're getting to the right point. The gospel has to be our primary focus. That's our mission. That's our great commission from right. Jesus Christ. But, you know, something that I learned a long time ago that really God pounded into me was that if I'm going to go into the political arena, I have to set the principles that I believe in based on his word before I get there. And then I can't change them because it, it's uncomfortable or it doesn't fit. And as I look through scripture, that's the model that, that scripture teaches me. Whether it's a Daniel who was an advisor to many wicked kings, or, or whether it's a, uh, an Obadiah in the reign of Ahab, a, sometimes you're in a role to influence an evil leader for good. And I hear a lot of people talking about that, and, and, and the meeting on Tuesday was a little bit about that. But, but here's where I get concerned when I, hear, when I hear believers talking about, should I or should I not vote for Donald Trump? Oftentimes what I hear is, Hillary's so bad that I have to. And, and the struggle that I have as a, it's actually not a struggle for me. I'm not going to vote for Donald Trump. And, and the reason for that is I believe that a leader has to meet certain qualifications before I will support them. And I don't think Hillary meets those, those qualifications. I, I think a great example of those is in Exodus 18, 21, where you, you talk about men who are able, men who are uh, truthful, men who fear God, and men who hate covetousness or greed or bribes. And if I look down the list on both of those, those people, Hillary doesn't meet those criteria, yeah, but, Nathan, but neither does Trump. But Nathan, no politician I've ever met does, because they all take bribes. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot of politicians that are that are uh, above reproach in that area. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Hang on, we're going to we're going to go to the phones where uh, Roger Bradley is hanging out. Roger, what do you say about all this, man? Hey, listen, I am I have a good relationship with Christ. I am a strong believer, but I've also learned that the word many times. Many a times, God has used evil for his good. Have we forgot the sovereign God that we serve? Have we forgot that, hey, sometimes these things happen, it will work out the benefit of the Lord? My philosophy is, listen, I trust in God, but I also have to look forward to the future of my country, our constitutional rights, what is going to happen if somebody like Hillary gets in. Now, don't get me wrong. I was never Donald Trump support us begin beginning but i have to believe that god has our back and he's going to say i got you just do what you need to do i think a lot of times we actually think it's too hard and you know it's it's scary when people say well i'm just not going out to vote because whatever listen we have other things that we have to worry about that is coming down the pike we have justices supreme court justices that are going to be leaving what are we going to replace them with if hillary gets in we have to think outside the box sometimes and 
many my uh, friends who were not supporting him. I hit say I have to support him now for that reason. Because, listen, you know the old saying, lesser of two evils? I trust in God, and no matter what I vote, I know that he will reign supreme and it will be to his glory. That's the way I see it. We need to quit fighting amongst ourselves, quit poking each other in the eye and tapping and, and talking about each other. Yeah. We need to do what's right, not just for our country, but for the individual. Because I tell you what, it's going to be scary if Hillary Clinton gets in there. People don't think about that, and they're mad because Cruz didn't get in or Rubio. What's your good man? Don't get me wrong. I was a Cruz supporter. But I'm telling you, I have to put my belief and my vote behind a man who is in lesser of two evils and say, you know what, my faith is in the good Lord, and I know no matter what happens, he's used evil for his gain before, and he'll do it again. Roger, thank you so much for your call, buddy, and thanks for listening. Uh, Always you- do. I love listening to you guys. You guys are my favorite radio station. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Roger. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, call hey, in there. anytime. 515-244-0077 is the phone number where you can call in. We got any texts there, Frank, or you just have a comment? No, but let it be known, the verse agrees with Roger. Well, there you go. The, <laughs> the verse agrees Because I would have I would have done the same thing. I, 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 I detested Cruz, but I would have sucked it up and voted for Cruz. Look, here, here we've got we've got a couple things here that I reason why we're talking about this is because if you don't know, this Tuesday, and I think I've said this multiple times, but just in case you just grabbed and jumped in your car, why are we talking about Donald Trump and who aren't we sick of talking about I'm sick. I'm tired of talking about Donald Trump. But I'm a Christian. And as a Christian, We've been pulled into this once again, this conversation. We were not allowed to let this go because this Tuesday, a thousand plus evangelical leaders were called to a meeting, a special meeting in New York with Donald Trump. And there's a lot to talk about there. But the thing that got my attention uh, was the comment that Michael Ferris made. He's the chancellor of Patrick Henry College, the chairman of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. He said Trump's meeting Tuesday with evangelical leaders marks the end of the Christian right. Now, this comes from a guy, Michael Ferris, who was there in 1980 when the Christian right, the evangelical right, the moral majority, all the same thing, when that started. Uh, and he said, uh, and, I, and I love this, and this is really the key point to me. He said that in 1980, I believed that Christians could dramatically influence politics. But today we see politics fully influencing a thousand Christian leaders. And that's really the, the, the challenge is how do we weigh those two things out? How do Christians get involved in politics, get involved in the civic arena, get involved in government in a God honoring way and not get sucked into just being another member of the Republican Party come hell or high water, no matter what, we're going to vote for the nominee. We're just going to go with whatever the party says, because really, at the end of the day, we're just Republicans more than we're Christians. And how do we also not become the vitriol hate spewing Christian, quote unquote, who says, if you vote for Donald Trump, you're not a Christian and you've gotten in bed with the Republican Party and you've given up your soul and and, and throw people under the bus. How, how do we not get into either one of these extremes? And Nathan Ottman is here from the family leader. And I think, Nathan, you were kind of pointing to how we get in this middle. Yeah, we, we you go back to Scripture. And, and let me be clear, while I might make a decision based on the principles I see in Scripture that I'm not going to support or cast my vote for Trump, others may come to a different conclusion. What I I at least ask that they'll do is that they do so on principle and i think anytime one of the one of the signs of of apostasy and being too too loyal to a party is that if we say you know god could work through evil and other things and, the, and these are our justifications for mr trump i don't see how those couldn't be also applied to secretary clinton because right, god or, can work in anybody right or they could have applied eight years ago to president barack and, obama and, and and furthermore there there sometimes is a mixed message i believe how you treat your family is really important and i think barack obama has a model family in many ways and so donald trump is a contrast to that so i see sometimes mixed messages even on what we prioritize depending on the letter behind the name it's your voice I want to hear, 515-244-0077. Send us a text with your comments, 515-809-0993. You're listening to The Truth, 99.3 FM. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High V, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershad. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. We promise you something, that's what you're going to get no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Hello, friends. Yeah, it's Friday. Uh, we're uh, we're having a good time here on Max World Live on 99.3 FM. The truth. So glad that you joined us. I know that you have a lot of things you could be listening to right now and you choose to listen to this. I hope at the very least you have a good time. I have a good time. But we also going to talk about th- th- some pretty serious stuff right now. You know, as Christians, um, we need to be sober minded as Christians. We need to be asking ourselves, how do we live in the world around us? And when Jesus said that we're to love our neighbors, that means that we might actually have to do something in our lives. We don't just sit back and do nothing. We actually have to live and interact with the humans around us. And so all the facets of things that are going on are important. And we're kind of having a little bit of a political conversation today. Chris Roloff is me. That's my name. I'm normally here with you. Mac is out. I'm filling in for him, so to speak, in the driver's seat. Frank is here. Jeb is here. And our guest is Nathan Ottman from the Family Lead. Uh, And the question that we're asking is kind of tricky. Do you think the evangelical right or uh, sort of the overly active political Christian uh, is a hindrance to the gospel? Uh, We've had some I've had some Facebook interaction on my page um, and I've got some guys that have said yes. Uh, Michael. Michael said, yes, in my opinion, the American church has left this. Uh, speaking to society up to the, quote, evangelical right. What was a league 
What was a league to elect moral candidates has turned out as a special interest group that only shows up during presidential elections, leaving the other four years ruled by others who are hostile to the truth of God. Uh, that's, uh, that's that. Another one here, Steve said, no, the meaning of the phrase has simply shifted to include those who are neither evangelical nor right. And uh, I think that's kind of true, too. And that's part of the problem to me is that once it becomes a voting block, uh, that doesn't necessarily include people, Nathan, that are thinking biblically and are and are um, engaging in the hard work of asking the difficult questions. And that's the reason why I ask this. The reason why I ask this question is because it is a hard question. Yeah. It seems like I'm slamming the evangelical right, and I'm not by any stretch of the imagination, right? I'm not putting down Christians in politics. That's not what I'm putting down. But what I'm saying is, are we prioritizing things? Are we saying the gospel is first, God's word is standard, and then we in, we're involved in these other things? Yeah, absolutely. And, and rebuke is good. And, and Christian brothers should welcome rebuke, critique, done in the right spirit with the goal of restoring if they see an error. I would hope a, a brother, if, if they saw me de-emphasizing the gospel, my job often intersects with politics, I would want a brother in Christ to come alongside and say, hey, make sure you keep the main thing the main thing. Um, the, other, the other thing to, to, to keep in mind is one of, your, one of your Facebook posts there mentioned you only speak during presidential elections. And I think you quoted a, a Colson last hour in his book talking about should leaders endorse at all and he right. was saying no and one of the problems with endorsing is when you endorse in modern american politics it basically means you stop criticizing for a lot of people and for a christian that's never okay in fact when we're brothers in christ we're called to admonish one another and so when you go into a relationship whether it's with a political party or a political candidate where you can't hold them accountable to god's law then that's when people start to question the primacy of the gospel and say, are you just a voting block because you're not willing to put God above all regardless of consequences? Absolutely. You can weigh in on this conversation at 515-244-0077. That's the voice line where you can talk to us or you can send us a text at 515-809-0993. And we got a text there, Frank. Well, a text and a chat. Uh, here's a text, Nathan, that'll probably kind of agree with your line of thinking. Voter for the Voting for the lesser of two evils is why the Republican Party thought they could get away with giving us Trump as a candidate. That's a texter. Yeah, that's you a think text. That's... And then uh, here's a kind of a question uh, f- for, for you on the chat or, or a, a, a question you might address. Uh, uh, this texter sa- or this chatter says, I could not have voted for Cruz, but how can meeting with anyone in the Christians right or left. Say that again. How, how can meeting with anyone in the Christians right or left? So in other words, Trump was meeting with, uh, with some Christian conservative leaders or whatever. Right. And, and this person is wondering how that can end the Christians right or left. Gotcha. Oh, I see how that ends the how that ends. Well, I, I think the, the Michael Ferris is saying that ends the Christian right, not not the meeting. It's the fact that we're even having the conversation. I think I think Michael Ferris is kind of saying that that maybe maybe he's overdoing this, that the that the Christian, the evangelical right as a people group that we're even talking with trump as a serious thing to consider is is the failing of it he, yeah. he should be from all it should be obvious to the christian evangelical the conservative christian that that trump is not our guy and that should be crystal clear but from perspective and so that's i think where he's getting at so it's it, the meeting itself is an indication that to many evangelical leaders it's uh it's still open for discussion and Chris's bumper music selection is making me question his salvation. Amen, brother. <laughs> it, it makes me question mine, too. You know, I, I'm, I'm really just, uh, I'm, I'm in for the right. And here's another text. We have only two choices to vote for. We don't have a third option. We can get behind that and take the win. It's our duty to vote for one of the two. It comes down to we have a repeat of Ross Perot ran and vote was split. And Clinton won, or we have the repeat of the last election and non-voters help hand it to Obama. We need to vote for the one that appears to be the better candidate. And then there's a, f- a final text here. Um, why is the guy from Texas the biggest liberal? Chris. Hashtag Chris. 
I got my own hashtag. <laughs> I've 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 gotten a hashtag. I have no idea why I'm a liberal. Hashtag Chris. Hashtag Chris. I'm pro- before I'm a liberal anything. I'm a guy who thinks that Jesus actually questions everything that I think. I think that Jesus is smarter than me. I think the Bible is smarter than me, and that my life is to be in subjection to what God's word says and what Jesus has to say. And so if I think for one minute that a conservative party or a liberal party or any political movement has the final authority in my life or tell me how I think, how about this? The Constitution of the United States doesn't tell me how I live my life. The Bible tells me how I'm going to live my life. And if the Constitution or whatever is ever in contradiction to what I believe Scripture says, and what Jesus called me to do, then I'm going to say something. And if that makes me a liberal, well, gee. I guess you can call me whatever you want. I'd really, I really hope that at the end of the day, you know that that I try to follow Christ. Uh, for those who know me, and that's part of the question here is as we move forward. The reason, uh, any time in an election year, and especially right now, Nathan, things are stressful. Yes. Think about Brexit. The, the, the you know Europe. Yeah. Uh, not the, okay, Britain just decided to leave the EU, and we're going to talk about this on Tuesday with Tom Coates. This is a big deal yeah it is it's Huge a deal. really big deal. I, I saw one one quote last night that said it was the the biggest political shock since 1383 i think in the peasants revolt i may have the year wrong but wow so people are maybe it's hi- hyperbole but you know they're saying it's a big deal over there so. well it, 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 it is a big deal i think i heard that the, the, the british dollar goes down by 12 percent. i think that's a huge that's a you know it, it's one thing to think your dollar goes down to 12 percent, but what if you have a million of those dollars that went down 12 percent, and that's really kind of the scary bit about this this is going to have a huge economic effect on on the world on their country um and i and i hope they made a good decision i don't know they made the decision they made i don't live there but i think it's going to affect me that causes people to freak out the rhetoric is really really high thanks to donald trump i think he's really raised the rhetoric bernie sanders has really raised the rhetoric why on earth the democrats have put hillary up on top i have no idea i don't know what she brings to the table except that she's uh scandalous but you know people are in upheaval and they're looking for hope and as christians as as 99.3 is a radio station my goal my my goal is to give people hope and the real hope is found in jesus christ it is absolutely it's in spiritual revival it's in heart change and one other thing is you talked about going into the past nostalgia yeah. or, or loving the past isn't the gospel and even what you talked about the the rhetoric and the tone I'm reading a book on James Madison. They they nearly arrested the VP during during his during his time. John Adams and, and Thomas Jefferson were not friends. So we've seen bad rhetoric before. We always have to, as believers, anchor ourselves in something more. We sure do. We'll be right back. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Hello, Friday. I've been waiting for you for a long time to just say Ready. But my life came from a little. It is a Friday. We got 10 minutes before the top of the hour. 10 minutes before the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and they're going to tell us if the world has completely, if we've fallen off the edge of the world or not. That's what Salem Radio Network News is going to tell us. You know, now more than ever, America needs revival. And I'm not just saying that. I really, I really, really mean that. Uh, The last couple of weeks have just been stressful for a lot of us, and we need to get refocused. And I'm excited because... I'm going to be going to the Family Leadership Summit on Saturday, July 9th, and I encourage everybody else to go. Uh, You can get your tickets right now at thefamilyleader.com. This event on Saturday, July 9th is going to be um, featuring Ann Graham Lotz, War Room actor T.C. Stalling, Biblical Worldview expert Del Tackett. If you've ever been through the Truth Projects, that's the guy. Bob Vanderplas will be sharing, too. There'll be a lot of local leaders, a lot of local Christian leaders who are going to be speaking to us. But most importantly, you have to go, and so you can't have an excuse, because I'm giving you tickets right now. All I want you to do is call 515-244-0077. I'll give you four tickets if you call me right now. Anybody who calls me right now, 515-244-0077. I'll give you four tickets to the Family Leadership Summit on Saturday, July 9th. Absolutely free. My gift Quick to you. Text here. Uh, apparently, one of your fans said, Chris, yes, exactly. Politics doesn't rule my life. Jesus does. Well, there you go. Hey, and you can always agree with me anytime you want at 515-809-0993. We were talking, we're talking about revival. Nathan Ottman is here from the Family Leader, and, and you were sharing some great stuff with us before we went to break. Why don't you continue with that? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something about politics and revival that I learned from being in D.C., and I, and I, won't, I won't share names, but I had the opportunity. when in D, You're in the middle of the political world. My job was political, and uh, I, I got to talk to these issues almost regularly often with people who were on completely different wavelengths than me. And that's kind of what we're seeing now, whether it's inner party or whether it's Democrat versus Republican or Trump versus non-Trump. And I remember someone asked me once, they said, how do you handle it when you're losing? From from a Christian standpoint, whether you're on Trump, for Trump, against, it kind of feels like you're losing. And they said, how do you stand that? And this this was a college group from a secular university. And I said, because when I wake up in the morning, winning for me is not what happens at the ballot box. It's not what happens in the courts. It's not even what happens in the legislature with what laws are passed. Winning for me on a day-to-day basis is when I walk in the spirit and follow Jesus Christ. And when I share the gospel with others, I'm sharing the hope that wells up inside of me if I'm walking in the spirit every day and keeps me joyful, not always happy or excited. I can be sad. I can mourn when my country makes bad choices. But that heart of revival will shine to your opponents. And if that's what's inside of you, then you go into politics. You can still do the right thing. I was right in the middle of it. But that is being a light, a testimony, salt. And boy, it sure does make you wake up the day after election day if it didn't go your way and say, Jesus is still king, and it's really okay. I'm not just saying it because I'm supposed to because I'm a Christian. It's really okay because I actually believe that Jesus is king. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. And let, me, let me ask you, Chris, we have a few, we have a few more minutes, and, and, and I think we've had this come up before. One of the results of the Tuesday's meeting, the evangelicals leader with, meeting with Trump, was this advisory board. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of an interesting thing. Donald Trump has put together uh, an evangelical advisory board. uh, And here are the list of people that are on that. Okay. Now, this does not mean that these people have endorsed Trump. Right. These are all people that have just become his advisors. we got Michelle Bachman. Uh, I'm going to do the names I know. Well, I guess we do all of them. Michelle Bachman, A.R. Bernard, Mark Burns, Tim Clinton, uh, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, James Dobson, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., Ronnie Floyd, uh, Jensen Franklin, Jack Graham, Harry Jackson, Robert Jeffress, David Jeremiah, many people know that name, Richard Land, James McDonald, a lot of people know that one, Johnny Moore, Robert Morris, Tom Mullins, Ralph Reed, James Robinson, uh, Tony Serez, 
Jay Strack, Paula White, Tom Winters, and Celie Yates. Uh, he's a lawyer. There's a lot of people. Some of those names you recognize. but M- Most of those I recognize. Most of those yep. you recognize. Yep. You know, and it was said to me by, by a mutual friend of all of ours, a friend of the station. She's uh, Tamara Scott is on 99.3 every Sunday at noon. You can listen to her program. She's going to be talking about a lot of this uh, actually Sunday as well, with more with Barb Heckey. She said this is an incredible thing. I mean, when was the last time uh, an evangelical advisory board like this has been put together to advise a potential uh, presidential nominee? I, I, I can tell you I don't know the answer to that question. But again, that's probably just because I'm an idiot. That's not because it hasn't ever happened. What do you think, Nathan? Do you think this is a big deal? you think it's good, bad? I don't think it's a big deal at all. Um, you don't? Okay. Not at all. And, and the reason is because advice is only good insofar as you listen to it. And so before I would say, will this matter at all? I would want to know, is Donald Trump actually going to listen to the people on this list? I've actually heard from some of the people on this list. And one of the things that's still up in there is how often are they going to meet? You know, it's, it's one thing to have a list, but a president's a pretty busy guy. And what types of questions is he going to ask? And are they going to be willing to give him hard scriptural truths? One of the hardest things to do is to tell the truth to a person in political power when you know they need correction or they're going to disagree with you. And all of us have been there. Have you ever yep. been that, at that moment yep. where you're like, I should yep. tell my friend this, but I'm really afraid of what they'll think? Yep. That's like a thousand times more. And these, <laughs> these are just men. And you're talking about the president of the United States. It's a scary thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sam Clovis, I think, sat here a couple of weeks ago, and he said Trump actually is a good listener and brings people in and will take their advice. He doesn't always take it, but he does entertain and listen to their advice. And this is probably aimed at Jeb. That Friday song is as bad as the other. (laughs) Well, you know what? That's fine. Hey, you know, Tamara Scott is on the phone with us. Tamara, welcome to the broadcast. I just mentioned you, and you called in, so there you go. I know. How cool is that? I just got in my car. And I hear Chris, my friend, saying my name. There you go. Hey, Tamara, I just want to give you a heads up. Unfortunately, you got like one minute before we're done. Well, I already disagree with the other host. I don't know who it is, and I apologize. But, yes, Trump is obviously listening. He heard the concerns that folks thought he was weak in his space, and he's already put together this coalition that has never been done before. Will he listen to them? He's already listened to us and put together the coalition. Will they meet? They may never meet, but he may call each of them individually and ask them about specific areas where they have strength. It's a start, folks. Let's build up, not tear down. I totally agree. It's a start. The jury's jury's just still out for me, but I, I, I don't think it hurts to have. I just, you know... A list doesn't quite inspire me yet. Yeah, well, and Tamara, you were, you were there on Tuesday, right? I absolutely was. Sweet presence of the Holy Spirit throughout the whole day. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. You know, I went into this bef- before I knew, Tamara, that you and Barb were at this event. I was bummed by, th- by the whole event. To be honest with you, I was sad. But then I knew that you were there and that Barb was there, and I heard from you guys firsthand your experiences there. And I have to give pause and say, you know, maybe, maybe he's going to listen. You know, um, I, I value Tamara Scott's opinion. Tamara, I value your opinion, and I listen to you. Thank you so much for calling and kind of giving us the last word. Keep up the great Thanks, work, guys. Tamara. Bye-bye. You can listen to her uh, talk more about this with Barb this Sunday uh, at 12 noon. Frank, you're Trump of the Booger. Is there anything seconds. Trump could do to get your vote, yes or no? Is there anything Trump could do to get my vote? Yeah. Uh, at this point, I probably wouldn't believe it. You're but listening to the truth. That was it. We were out of time.